on Brenda's Quilts and today I want to show you how very easy and simple it is to make the boardwalk table runner and placemat. So here's an example of it for you to see. Here's our table runner and our placemat and the beauty of this piece is that you cut strips, sew them together, make little groupings and add those one to the other and, the, and what happens is there are absolutely no seams to match on this piece which makes it really fun and fast to do. And We also use a walking foot to quilt it very quickly and simply. So if you're looking for an easy to make project, this is certainly it. So I wanted to show you some of the basics of how this project works. Now the first issues that most people uh, face, especially beginners, is how to pick fabrics that are going to look really, really nice for their project. Um, this particular project is pretty simple to work with because what you want are two focused fabric colors, which in this case are this orange and this blue, and then you want three neutral colors, three colors all in the same uh, family. So in this case, I'm using taupe. One needs to be light, one needs to be medium, and one needs to be a dark value of the same color. So if you can pick out two focus fabrics that you like, and then just find three neutrals, light, medium, and dark values of it, you're all set to go. Because it's January, I'm kind of thinking green, and I would like to make a, a runner and placement sack that will feature some really, really nice um, St. Patty's kind of fabrics. So I, I have this really, really lovely Figo fabric with a clover leaf on it. And I'm going to list all the fabrics I use uh, in the description of this video so that if you want, you can order them from our online store. So there's our Figo clover. It's one of the focus fabrics. So I have a light and a dark focus fabric. Here we have a Northcott fabric that's got some, some greens and some taupes in it. And then I've chosen the taupey colors again for my neutrals. So I have a darker neutral, I have a medium neutral, and I have a light neutral. So first of all, here's the pattern. <clears throat> And um, it is available through your local quilt shop or through uh, shop.amongbrendasquilts.com. Uh, this pattern is not included with this video. It's something that you will have to purchase. As you can see on the pattern cover, I was working with a dark gray and what I call a light gray, which is this dotty fabric here, and a white, which is in here. So that's the way the back of the pattern reads. So you've got a dark, a light, and a and a and a lighter, which is the white. So here is our dark, here it's our neutral, here's our dark neutral, here's our light neutral, and here's what we're calling our white. So you will follow the instructions within the pattern to cut the strips that you need for that. As well, the pattern uh, back shows uh, requirements for a dark teal and a light teal. So this is our are dark and this is our light and we're going to cut strips uh, following the directions inside the pattern. Cutting directions are given for just the runner if you just want to make the runner or for four placemats and if you want to make more than four placemats just double it up and you'll get eight. So I've already got all my strips cut for my runner. I have enough fabric to make uh, placemats as well but we're just going to work on the runner today. And that's taken me all of like 15 minutes, so that's pretty quick, don't you think? So in our pattern we have three different strip sets. This one's called Strip Set 1, and that's the one we're going to work on first. And what it is, is it's some different widths of our strips sewn together. And these are all uh, strips that have been cut in half, so they're about 20 inches long. So following the instructions, I just lined up my strip sets. And like I said, these are all about 20 inches long. None of them are the same width. That's okay. What you're going to do is just match up one side and sew one to the next with a quarter inch seam. Once you get them all sewn together and pressed, they're ready to be chopped up into little strips. So that's what happens next. 
I've trimmed one edge nice and even, and then I'm just going to use my grid mat to cut the sections that are required. I've got everything lined up on one side and along a top edge as well. I don't even have to look at my ruler. I can use my grid to cut. And here are my little strip sets for strip set one. And here's strip set two, all ready to get chopped up. And there we go, that's number two. And here's strip set three, and it's gonna get chopped up just like the last two strip sets. And then we're gonna put it all together. So you've got strip set one, strip set two, and strip set three, and they're all chopped up, and you follow the directions to put them together. Now you've got your strip set one, two, and three all finished up. And all you've got to do is arrange them as required in the pattern and sew them together. And as you sew them together, you'll notice there are no two seams that touch each other. So there's absolutely no matching. All you've got to do is make sure that the edges are even ways. And in pretty short order, you'll have a whole bunch of these sets, which you'll add together to get the length of your table runner. And there's the center of our table runner. And all I'm going to be doing next is adding a skinny border and a wide border, and then we'll be ready for our quick and easy quick quilting method. And there it is, looking very smart, I must say. And now it's time to quickly quilt your table runner and your placemats together. I'm just going to work on the table runner today but if you wanted to do your placemats all at one time, you could use the same method without cutting each piece separately. Anyway, here is my backing fabric. I'm laying it right side up. And what I'm doing, you're going to need masking tape and pins. You can use straight pins if you're going to get to your project quickly. Or you can use safety pins if you're going to let it sit around for a while before you quilt it. So what I'm doing is I'm taping either long end of my backing fabric. And I have pressed it before I brought it to the table here, just so that I know it's nice and flat. Now, when I tape it out, I want to make sure that it's extremely flat, not stretched when I tape it, but kind of snug. So I tape both ends here and here, but I'm going to tape here and here using the same method. Okay, it's taped all the way around so that it's nice and snug. Then I've pre-cut a piece of batting the correct size, which is just maybe an inch or two larger than the actual table runner. And I'm going to center it on my backing piece. And I'll seam it out. Now one thing you want to be careful of is threads tend to migrate and get stuck on batting, and we don't want a piece of thread showing through the top to the bat. Now I'm just going to grab my burner and smooth it on top. It's already marked with all of its lines, sort of stitching lines, and again, I'm going to smooth this out. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use straight pins in this case. I'm going to pin across and through the middle. That's a cross formation. I'll pin about every four inches, and I want to go through all three layers when I pin. As I stitch, these pins are removed. And as I said, if you want to use safety pins, that's great. They just take a little longer to pop in and take out, but they, I mean, there are safety pins, so they're not going to come out on you as you stitch. Now I go through this side, through the middle. That gives me my cross formation. And then what I want to do is I've got like four quadrants now that don't have any pins, so one, two, three, four, just like if you were cutting, you know, squares or something, you have an empty area here. I want to pin in that empty area working kind of from the middle and out, and fill each quadrant with pins. And I like to put, you know, a goodly number of pins along the outside. 
So I'll just carry on and pin out the rest of it. After it's all pinned, you remove your tape and you're ready to go to the sewing machine. Now in order to do the quilting on your uh, sewing machine, you're going to have to use a walking foot. And I have one here for my baby lock machine. And this is a pretty high-end walking foot, but practically any sewing machine has a walking foot attachment that you will either have or that you can buy from um, your local uh, sewing machine store. Uh, if you happen to live in our area, we can uh, order you a walking foot anytime. Anyway, this goes on the machine and what it does is it has kind of a feeding system here. And whereas you have feed dogs on your machine that feed the bottom layer of fabric ahead, there's nothing to feed the top layer. So when you've got three layers together to avoid uh, puckering, you need some kind of feed dog system on the top and on the bottom, and this uh, walking foot provides that system on the top. What I like to do when using the walking foot is to set my stitch length a little bit uh, longer. So I've set it to uh, three, and, um, and then it's just a matter of following the lines on the, uh, the table runner. I like to go in one direction on the first line, but then uh, I come back the other way on the next line. And this prevents the, the whole piece from kind of skewing. Uh, so that's uh, quite useful to do that. You wanna start off the fabric and stitch all the way down to the other end and off the fabric. Um, you can pivot to go to the next line or you can cut your thread and start over. You'll also have to move your pins out of the way as you go. So here we are, and I'm just going to just make sure that that uh, first little section does not uh, fold back on itself. And I'm just following my marked lines with a walking foot. You don't have to do any feeding at all um, because the machine is pulling the fabric uh, along at the correct rate. So don't try and help it is what I'm saying. I'm just guiding it so that it stitches on the line. And I do like to start in the middle and work my way out. As I said, rather than going to the other end and starting again, you want to work in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to pivot, move over to the next line. And so in this opposite direction. And that's what you'll do for the whole piece. Another added beauty of a walking foot is that because there's a feed duct system on the top and the bottom, it has the ability to work in any fullness. So if you watch along with me, you'll see there are some areas that look a little bit on the puffy side, but I'm not pushing and straining to fix it. I'm just letting the machine look after that for me and that dual feed system will look after any kind of poofiness. And there you have it, the Boardwalk Table Runner. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, my hope is that you'll give this a try to enjoy this table runner yourself.